morning students today we will start with the mechanism of digestion of cockroach there are various steps which are involved in the digestion of a food in case of cockroach the first step is the intake of the food the cockroach is an omnivorous animal it takes all the types of animal and vegetable matter though prefers sugary and starchy substances it feeds on bread fruits vegetables paper cloth leather and dead bodies and even it can feed on the on its own fellows the second step is the ingestion basically the cockroach senses the food or locates the food with the help of smell receptors which are the olfactory receptors and these receptors are present on the antenna and the pulps pulps are basically present on the labium and the maxilla which i have already taught in the mouth part regions then comes the uh, basically in the ingestion what happens is that the food is located with the antenna and pulps and then it is brought into the mouth and is masticated with the help of a pair of mandibles which works horizontally the lacina and the galea of the maxilla and the glossa and paraglossa of labium holds the food during this act of mastication whereas the labrum and the labium which is the upper and the lower lip prevents the loss of the food during swallowing in the mouth the food is mixed with the saliva brought into the preoral cavity by the common slavery duct which opens behind the hypopharynx then the hypopharynx assists in swallowing the food and passing it through the mouth into the pharynx where it reaches the crop by peristalsis movement through the esophagus this was the esophagus region now the food has arrived into the crop region through the esophagus now comes the third the main step of digestion basically the ingestion which begins at the mouth in the mouth uh, the food receives the saliva and the saliva contains the slavery amylase which helps in the digestion of the starch some of the starch has been converted into the simple sugars and the rest will be digested in the in this third step which occurs in the crop and in the midgut region when uh, once the food reaches the crop region crop region receives the enzymes from the midgut region through the gizzard for the digestion of some fats and proteins this is the gizzard from here the midgut region releases the enzymes and these enzymes basically the lipase and the proteolytic enzymes they enter into the crop through the gizzard and they help in further digestion of the food and then the food passes through the gizzard into the midgut lining and this gizzard as i already explained in previous lecture thus this gizzard has this cutaneous plate with the teeth and it also has the pad with the bristles which act as the sieve this funnel part of the gizzard uh, basically helps in passing the food into the midgut region and this region then opens into the midgut and this midgut and the hepatic cecca secretes the further enzymes and these enzymes are basically the trypsin and the erypsin which converts the proteins into amino acid the lipases which breaks the fats into fatty acids and glycerol and enoteases and maltases which complete the digestion of the starch then comes the next step which is absorption absorption basically occurs in the midgut lining in the hepatic cecca all the food is absorbed through these midgut and the hepatic cecca and the food absorbed food is then passed into the blood that fills the hemocele the blood that distributes the food to all part of the body in the midgut a peritrophic membrane is also formed around the food which is secreted by the funnel like extension of the gizzard this extension of the gizzard funnel like extension basically secretes a peritrophic membrane this peritrophic membrane around the food and this membrane is basically composed of very thin layer of protein and chitin and it protects the delicate lining of the midgut from the injury of hard indigestible particles in the food this membrane the peritrophic membrane is permeable to the digestible food as well as to the enzymes and because of the peritrophic membrane the midgut is divided into two compartments one is the outside the peritrophic membrane and one between the midgut and the peritrophic membrane the digestion first occurs outside the peritrophic membrane and then this digested food passes into the space between the midgut and the peritrophic membrane and further digestion takes place in that particular space 
then the digested food moves to the blood from where it is circulated to the rest of the body. The cellulose is digested by the microorganisms that inhabit the hindgut. Acidic acid which is formed by the breakdown of cellulose is actively absorbed by the hindgut epithelium. Then is the assimilation. Basically in assimilation the food which has been absorbed into the blood is converted into the body components. And lastly the indigestible matter which remains after the complete process of digestion is stored in the rectum region and in the rectum region the rectal pulse helps in the absorption of the water and the salts from the food and as a result the hard feces get accumulated in the rectum and then they are expelled out of the body through the anus. Now we will start with the next system which is the respiratory system. Respiratory system is the system which is involved in the exchange of the gases that is the carbon dioxide and the oxygen. Oxygen is taken from the atmosphere and the carbon dioxide which is produced inside the body is expelled out of the body. The respiratory system of the cockroach mainly consists of the wide shining air tubes of trachea which communicate with the exterior by small apertures which has already been explained which are referred to as spiracles. And while, while studying about the morphology of the cockroach, I have already explained the spiracles. They are basically the openings which are present on the surface of the cockroach. And there are 10 pairs of spiracles in case of cockroach, out of which 2 pairs are in the thorax region and the 8 pairs are in the abdominal region. The first pair of thorax spiracle is present between the prothorax, which is the first segment, and the mesothorax, which is the second segment. This is the first thoracic spiracle which is present between the prothorax and the mesothorax, the first and the second segment of the thorax region and the second pair is present between the mesothorax and the metathorax, this one. These are the two thoracic spiracles. These spiracles are smaller and occur on the sides of the Basically, the abdominal spiracles are smaller as compared to the thoracic spiracles and they occur on the sides of the abdomen, whereas the thoracic spiracles occurs in the pleura. Abdominal spiracles lie in the soft membrane between the turga and the sterna in the interior eight segment of the abdomen. Each spiracle is bounded by a sclerite which is called as peritreme and it leads into a cavity which is referred to as the atrium. Atrium has a closing device of valve, this, this is the valve and it, is, it also has the bristly plate of filtering apparatus. It basically keeps the dust particles, parasites and waters from entering into the respiratory tract of the cockroach. From the atrium arises the main trachea, this is the trachea. Now comes the second part of the respiratory system which is trachea. Trachea is spread throughout the body and they arise as invaginations of the ectoderm. They are formed of single layer of cells which secrete a thin chitinous lining. This is the single layer of cell and there is the chitinous lining. It, there is a lumen between the epithelium and the chitinous lining and this is the spiracle. So this is the basic structure of the trachea, the starting of the trachea. The epicuticle of this lining, this basically lacks the waxy layer as, is found, as was also observed in the body wall epicuticle. The chitinous lining is thickened to form the spiral rings. These are the spiral rings. These are called as the tenedia, these spiral rings. Their main function is to prevent the collapsing of the trachea when the pressure is reduced inside the trachea. The cuticular lining of trachea is continuous with the exoskeleton and is shed at the time of the molting. When the molting occurs, basically molting is the shedding of the cuticle when the cockroach in, is in the metamorphosis stage. Then this cuticle is, re, uh, is removed from the, uh, along with the exoskeleton, it is removed from the body and it is shed at the time of the molting in the young cockroaches. There are three pair of longitudinal tracheal trunks. These are dorsal longitudinal tracheal trunks. There are ventral longitudinal tracheal trunks and there are lateral longitudinal, these are the lateral longitudinal tracheal trunks. So there are three tracheal, longitudinal tracheal trunks, three pairs of longitudinal tracheal trunks in case of cockroach, dorsal, lateral and ventral in the abdominal regions. 
These are interconnected with each other with the help of transverse trachea. De these are the transverse trachea. These are the dorsal longitudinal tracheal trunk. These are the ventral longitudinal tracheal trunk and these are the lateral longitudinal tracheal trunk. The smallest branches of the trachea are fine cuticular tubules. These are the finest branches of the trachea. These are referred to as the tracheoles. These tracheoles arise in groups. These are arising as groups and then they enter into the tissues, either the muscles and here they again from the branches. They arise from the, uh, the uh, they are basically blind extensions and several tracheoles may be formed from a single tracheole cell. This is the tracheole cell. Tracheoles are not shed during the molting. After molting, they rejoin the trachea. Tracheoles are permeable to the liquid. During slow respiration activities, the small, bl small blind endings of the tracheoles in the muscles and other organs are filled with the tissue fluid. This is the tissue fluid, which is represented as the darkened area. This is basically the tissue fluid. Trachea and tracheoles carry di air directly to the different parts of the body. So now we will start with the mechanism of the respiration. Basically, there are two modes of respiration in case of cockroach. It is in the resting stage and in the running stage. Because resting stage is a stage which does not require a large amount of the oxygen, therefore there is no special effort which is made in this part of the respiration. In this what happens is that the, uh, because of the capillary action, the fluid from the cells enters into the tracheoles. And this tracheole, because it has the oxygen which is entering through the spiracles to the trachea and then to the tracheoles, this dissolves in the tissue fluid and then is diffused into the cells or the tissues to which it is connected. The tissues utilize this oxygen and as a result there develops an oxygen gradient between these two regions. Therefore more of the air is, more of the air is drawn inside the tracheoles from the outside atmosphere. Then comes the running stage of respiration because running is a intense activity, it requires large amount of oxygen, therefore the oxygen requirement increases and it is brought about by the special respiratory movements of abdomen. The abdomen starts contracting, expanding and contracting alternatively and this is caused by the special muscles which are called as turgosternal muscles. Their expansion and contraction results in inspiration and expiration respectively. The first and the first thoracic and the first abdominal stigmata or the spiracles always remain open all the time. Whereas the remaining spiracles open only during inspiration and closes during ex expiration. During active respiration, fluid from tracheoles is drawn back into the cells due to increase in the osmotic pressure of the cells. This enables the air to go deep in the tracheoles and reach the cells. And as a result, the efficiency of providing the oxygen to the required tissue or the cell increases. When the cell or the tissue utilizes this oxygen, it results in the production of the water and carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide diffuses into the blood and is carried to the body surface where it diffuses out because of the pressure gradient or it is expelled out during expiration. Water which is produced during the oxidation of the food is retained in the body so as to prevent the loss of the water from the body. The spiracles, all these spiracles, these spiracles, two in the thoracic region, two pairs in thoracic region and eight pairs in abdominal region remains open for a very short time and not at all the same time in response to a localized reduction in hemocylic pressure. The spiracle is literally sucked open and gulp of air gets in. It is basically controlled by the intersegmental muscles and the nervous system and this nervous system is in turn triggered by the difference in the partial pressure of the oxygen and the carbon dioxide inside and outside the body. So this was about the respiratory system. Now comes the second system of the cockroach which is the circulatory system. Circulatory system is the system which is involved in circulating all the waste material, the food materials bringing about the waste matter from the body. Basically it helps in circulating the fluid throughout the body. 
circulatory system is basically of two kinds the open or cl closed in case of cockroach it is an open circulatory system because it lacks the blood vessels and the blood flows freely in the open spaces then that type of system is called as open circulatory system the cockroach open circulatory system consists of hemocele heart and blood and there are no blood vessel except the one which is present in the interior side and is referred to as the interior aorta first we will start with the hemocele basically the hemocele is the general body cavity which lacks the lining of the mesoderm epithelium and because it is filled with the blood it is referred to as the hemocele the hemocele this is the hemocele this is the ts of the cockroach this shows the hemocele region hemocele is divided into three compartments one two and three these are the three compartments which is divided with the help of two horizontal muscular membranes these are the this dorsal diaphragm which is also called as pericardial septum and the ventral diaphragm which is attached to the sterna laterally and this dorsal diaphragm is attached to the turga laterally both the apertures both these membranes are perforated at many places so that it will allow the free flow of the blood the three compartment which is formed by these dorsal diaphragm are the pericardial sinus or the hemocele or dorsal sinus the middle one which is very large is referred to as the middle sinus or the perivisceral sinus which consists of most of the viscera and the lower one which is the perineural hemocele or the ventral sinus or the sternum sinus is the lower one which consists of the nerve cord the dorsal sinus consists of the heart these are the three compartments of the hemocele this dorsal sinus also has the triangular muscles which are the aleri muscles with uh, which with which the heart chambers interacts with the body of the earthworm the internal muscles the head also contains many small cavities which are referred to as the head sinuses then comes the heart heart is basically 13 chambered and it is segmentally arranged it is present in each segment first three chambers in, is in the thorax region and the rest are in abdominal region that is 10 segments these first three are in the thorax region and the rest 10 are in the abdominal region posterior end of the heart is closed this is the posterior end of the heart this is closed whereas the interior end is open and this open interior end leads to the formation of the interior aorta there are uh, in case of the heart the opening the interior opening each chamber of the heart opens into the one in front of it the opening is guarded by a pair of ventricular wall this heart opens into the heart chamber which is interior to it with a wall which is called as the ventricular wall it only allows the forward flow of the blood at the posterior side of each chamber except the last which is closed there is pair of small holes these are the pair of small holes on either side uh, which is referred to as the ostia and this ostia is guarded by the auricular walls this allows the blood to pass into the heart from the dorsal sinus this was the dorsal sinus the, from, from dorsal sinus the blood will enter into the heart only through the ostia and these are the ostia which are the openings which are present on the either side of the chamber and this is guarded by the auricular valve then comes the blood the blood is colorless and is called as the hemolymph it consists of a fluid which is called as the plasma this is the plasma this is plasma uh, this plasma basically has the cells which are called as hemocytes. Hemocytes are irregular, colorless and nucleated. They are of two kinds, the proleukocytes and the phagocytes. Proleukocytes are small in size but their nucleus is very large and covers entire cytoplasm. It divides by mitosis. The phagocytes are large and they attack the foreign substances such as bacteria. There is no respiratory pigment, therefore it is colorless because uh, the blood has uh, no role in respiration it is basically through the uh, spiracles and the trachea therefore no respiratory pigment is required the function of blood is it keeps the tissue moist it absorbs food from the alimentary canal and distributes it it brings nitrogenous waste from all parts of the body to the excretory organs for elimination it carries the defensive phagocytes to the places of infection it transports the secretion of the ductless glands to the required organs 
इट ब्रिंग्स कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड नियर द बॉडी वॉल फॉर डिफ्यूजन आउट ऑफ द बॉडी 